We begin our journey with the 2002 NBA Draft. The Knicks hold the 7th pick, but make their first mistake. Actually, mistake is an understatement. This is more of a train wreck. On the day of the draft, the Knicks traded Marcus Camby, Mark Jackson, and their 7th pick for Antonio McDice and the 25th pick. Now, Marcus Camby is pretty much the perfect veteran center to have on your team. He puts up good numbers, has a high win share rating, and is a quiet and positive presence in the locker room on top of having an affordable contract. Antonio McDice, meanwhile, injured his knee in the 2002 season and missed the remainder of the season with this injury. So of course, the Knicks trade for McDice, who gets injured in the preseason and misses the whole season. And on top of all of this, the Knicks gave Denver their number 7 pick. We are not going to make this trade, and instead keep our pick and Marcus Camby and select Amari Stoudemire. So yeah, not making this trade gives the Knicks the chance to have Amari in his prime instead of just the tail end of it. In December of 2003, the Knicks originally hired Isaiah Thomas as president of basketball operations. In other words, he was the guy they wanted making the decisions. Now I really hate talking bad about Isaiah as he was an awesome player, but look what he did to the Knicks. As new dictator of the Knicks, I don't let Isaiah Thomas anywhere near this team. With Amari, the Knicks win one more game in the 2003 season, which slides them down to the 11th pick. With this pick, we are going to choose Nick Collison, a player who has spent his career all in one city. The guy is loyal, a great bench presence, and a pretty good player. All things we are looking for in a draft pick. In the 2004 season, the Knicks continued to make trades that were short-sighted and would kill any chance of creating a dynasty. We are not going to let that happen. The first trade involved Latrell Sprewell. I actually agree with the Knicks that they should move Latrell, as he does not fit in with our current culture. The Knicks got back Nazir Muhammad and Tim Thomas, which will help us with a trade later on. The second deal that the Knicks made which actually killed them was trading for Stefan Marbury and giving up their first round pick. Our team is building a better culture. We do not need a me first player who eats Vaseline. No deal is made. And so the Knicks, without Marbury, lose five more games in the 2004 season. This gives us the number nine pick, and look, there's future all-star Andre Iguodala. Let's take him. We also still land Trevor Ariza in the second round, a solid pickup. In the 2004 offseason, the Knicks traded Dikembe Mutombo to the Bulls for Jamal Crawford. I like this deal. It gives us a young shooting guard, and so, we still make it. In the 2005 season, the new New York Knicks tried out a starting lineup of Howard Isley, tank commander, along with Jamal Crawford, Andre Iguodala, Amari Stoudemire, and Marcus Camby. We do win two more games, as Amari has an awesome season. However, our draft pick remains the same as Phoenix and Denver lose more games, which helps some of the Western Conference lottery teams pick up a few more wins. Leading into the 2005 NBA Draft, the Portland Trailblazers held the number 3 pick. However, they didn't want a point guard and instead traded down in the draft with Utah. Seeing as this pick is up for grabs, we come over the top with a godfather offer of our own, trading the number 8 pick and Jamal Crawford along with our 2006 and 2008 first round picks. I don't want to give up our first round picks, but this is worth it, because with the number 3 pick, we take Chris Paul, pairing him with Amari in what is sure to be a frightening pick and roll duo. We also still trade Nazir Muhammad to the San Antonio Spurs, giving us the 30th pick and again, we select David Lee. And we do not trade Kurt Thomas for Quinn and Richardson, because Q has two more years left on his deal than Kurt does. I like Nate, but I'd rather have the cap space. In October of 2005, the Knicks originally made this trade. Tim Thomas, two scrubs, and their 2006 and 2007 first round picks for Eddie Curry. Eddie freaking Curry. And what did those two first round picks turn into, you might ask? Oh, nothing. Other than the number two pick in the 2006 draft, who was LaMarcus Aldridge. Oh, and the number nine pick in the 2007 draft, who was Joakim Noah. So yeah, Isaiah Thomas, what were you doing? So we don't make that monstrosity of a deal and instead just keep the players on our roster because our Knicks team values something previously foreign to the Knicks franchise, cap space. The next trade the Knicks made this season was actually a good one. The Knicks traded the expiring contract of Antonio Davis for Jalen Rose, who had another two years on a huge deal, and the Raptors first round pick. We are still willing to take on salary for a year as we are not yet players in the free agency market with a rookie Chris Paul. And we make the same deal, though this time we trade Tim Thomas's expiring deal as we no longer have Antonio Davis. And the last trade the Knicks made this year was trading Trevor Ariza and Penny Hardaway for Steve Francis. For the last time, Knicks, 
We have no interest in washed up stars. In the original 2006 NBA season, the Knicks wheeling and dealing left them with an impressive record of 23 and 59. We don't do much better finishing at 33 and 49, but there's a reason for that. Amari missed basically this whole season with knee problems. Chris Paul in his absence did win rookie of the year, and the future looks bright in New York. We do not own our pick in the 2006 NBA draft. However, we do have the 20th pick from Toronto. With that pick, we take Rajon Rondo, as we still need solid guard play off the bench, and he will be a valuable asset for our team in the future. We also need help on the wing, as Trevor Ariza is not really ready to contribute for this team. So we signed Anthony Parker for a little more money than the Raptors originally offered him. The 2007 season saw the Knicks only able to make one trade, as they had pretty much traded away all of their assets at this point. They traded for Zach Randolph, who could never get it going in New York. Do not make this trade. As the 2007 regular season concludes, our new New York Knicks find ourselves with a record of 53 and 29. 20 wins better than the old New York Knicks previous record. This lands the Knicks with the top seed in the Eastern Conference and and better yet, the Knicks defeat the Cavaliers in the Eastern Conference Finals. With this, they find themselves matched up against the San Antonio Spurs, with the winner taking home the NBA Championship. Unfortunately, the Spurs still win this championship, but an NBA title in the future seems inevitable for the Knicks at this point. The 2007 NBA Draft finds the Knicks with the 27th pick, where the Detroit Pistons previously picked. The Pistons took Aaron Aflalo at 27, which seems like the perfect pick for this Knicks team, so we also take him. And so the 2008 NBA season comes and brings with it another chance for the Knicks to win the NBA title. New York City is all aboard the Knicks hype train and the Knicks live up to their crazy expectations, winning 64 games in the regular season and finishing tied with the Boston Celtics for the top seed in the East. Unfortunately, the Celtics win a tiebreaker that gives them the number one seed, and this number one seed gives the Celtics home court advantage against the Knicks in the Eastern Conference Finals, which they used to beat the Knicks in seven hard fought games. And so the Knicks leave the 2008 season again without a title, however, 2009 looks like it could be the year of the Knickerbocker. And so let's fast forward past the 2008 draft because the Knicks do not have their first round pick, and to the 2009 NBA playoffs. The Knicks are fresh off an incredible 2009 season in which they returned their core players, won 65 games, and finished as the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. This success continues in the Eastern Conference Finals as the Knicks dispatch of a hot Orlando Magic team to reach the NBA championship. Their opponent in the final series is the Los Angeles Lakers, led by Kobe Bryant who is looking for his first title without Shaq. And I'm sorry Kobe, you have to keep looking as the New York Knicks defeat the Lakers and win the 2009 championship in 6 games, with Chris Paul being named the NBA Finals MVP.